When starting out in the Unify ecosystem, it's always a big question as to what gateway do you buy? They start from the low hundreds and work all the way up to $2,000. So in this video, we're gonna try and break that down really simply and go through a few questions and scenarios that will help you make those decisions. Hey everyone, my name is Monty and welcome to Inside Wire. So the first question I generally ask myself is, am I hosting my own cloud key or am I gonna get one with one built in? Let's start with the first bunch of gateways that actually don't have a Unify cloud key built into them. So this would mean that you'd need something external, whether you use the Unify hosting platform, whether you have a cloud key yourself, or you use the cloud key enterprise, or you actually host it within your own network yourself or somewhere in the cloud. Now this can be done on Windows, Linux, or Mac OS. So if you wanna see a video on that, let me know down in the comments below and I'll see what I can put together. These are the four options that you have when it comes to the non-cloud key integrated. So that is the Gateway Lite, the Gateway Max, the Gateway Pro, and the Gateway Enterprise. There's four different options that you have within there. And let's quickly run through them one by one. The two on the left of the screen are the Lite and the Max. They're your more compact gateways. So let's run through the specs of those and see what they're like. So for the Lite, you have one gig WAN, one gig LAN. You have no additional ports on it, so it is only those two ports. The throughput of the IPS IDS just says it's 10 times faster than the USG, so it doesn't actually give a figure. So if anybody does have that figure, let me know down in the comments below so other people watching this video can you find that useful. Uh, it's not rack mountable, you can't remap any ports, so there's no dual WAN capabilities, and it comes in at $129 or 123 pounds. The Max is a little bit quicker, so this is probably something you would use in a slightly bigger environment, so maybe a house or a small office. So we have two and a half gig WAN, two and a half gig LAN. There are four additional ports on the back, which there isn't any PoE to it, so you've got to keep that one in mind if you are powering access points or cameras, you actually need to go ahead and buy a PoE switch or a PoE injector. The throughput for when IPS and IDS is enabled is one and a half gigabits per second. So not quite full two and a half gig WAN speed, but you get one and a half gigs in terms of IPS and IDS. Is it rack mountable? No. Can you remap ports? So yes, you can have dual WAN capabilities on this. So this is why I say you might want this in an office where the internet connection is a little bit more important where you need that failover when should it go should your first internet line go down and that comes in at 199 dollars or 190 pounds then we move on to the pro version so this is something again we move into a slightly bigger office maybe a small to medium sized business so this comes with a 10 gig sfp plus and one gigabit port and in terms of the LAN, it comes with 10 gig SFP plus and one gigabit LAN as well. With this, you can see the throughput improves with three and a half gigabits per second. It's rack mountable, you can remap the ports so there is dual WAN capabilities and the price jumps up significantly as well, which goes up to $499 or 478 pounds. And it does have a redundant power supply, but you need to buy the Unify RPS. Last but not least, this is the new one Ubiquiti have just released. So this is the Enterprise version. So this is the equivalent of the Enterprise Fortress Gateway. And we'll cover this a little bit later as I show you the two different options that are the same across both cloud key and non-cloud key options. So this has two 25 gig connections in it with SFP28, two 10 gig SFP plus ports, and two two and a half gig ports. I didn't break them down by WAN or LAN because you can remap any port to whatever you want them to be. It has four to five ports in terms of LAN capability, depending on whether you're using dual WAN or not. It has 12 and a half gigabits per second throughput with IPS and IDS enabled. Rack mountable, yes, as you would expect something of this size. That comes in at $2,000 and £1,990. With this, you move into the hot swappable power supply units and that can be purchased for an additional price should you need any spares. The next question I asked myself, well, do I need Wi-Fi integrated? So there are some units out there that you can buy yourself which have Wi-Fi integration. And these are the ones that you can see right here. So we have the Express, the Dream Router, and the Dream Wall. Now, some of these have been out a little while, i.e. the Dream Router, that's actually been out for quite a while. And I think the Dream Wall is coming on to about 12 to 18 months. So that's been out a little while as well. So let's take a look. So we have a very budget option with the Unify Express. So this is $129 and 123 pounds. Again, for those very smaller environments, maybe a few person office, maybe a small home office. So something like this where you don't have too many clients, 
is perfect for what you would need. So it only has one gig WAN and LAN ports, so only two ports on the back of the unit itself. There's no additional port, there's no IPS IDS on this, so there's no intrusion prevention detection, but you do get the rest of the full unified features within network itself. Is it rack mountable? Nope, something that size you wouldn't expect it to be. There's no dual WAN, and the Wi-Fi 6 roughly services up to about 50 clients. There's no redundant power supply, and there's no additional storage in this as well. So we then move on to the Dream Router, which is something for a home which you want to get into the Unify ecosystem and looking to expand it a little bit more with Unify Protect or even Access. Within this you can't run the full Unify stack but you can run network plus two more. So it can be network, access and protect, or it can be network, protect and talk. Again, this is limited to one gig WAN and LAN. It has four ports on the back. Now it's worth noting that two of those ports are PoE, which is very useful in some cases for those smaller setups. The throughput, there isn't anything definitive online, but we've seen some reports that come in around 700 to 800 megabits per second in terms of throughput. And is it rack mountable? No. Can you do dual WAN? No, you can't. It has Wi-Fi 6 built into it, which can service up to about 300 clients. It's $199 or 190 pounds. There's no redundant power supply, and there is a storage that you can add to it, which is a micro SD card. The last one with Wi-Fi integration was Unify's attempt to actually redefine how networks are set up. So they attempted in terms of without the standard rack system, which as you start expanding your network is not really feasible. If it's a small house, you don't have a room for a rack and you just want it wall mounted, this could be the one for you. Now this comes in at a little bit more of a higher price and is a bit more beefy in terms of the unit itself. So it runs the full Unify OS stack, so you can run all the apps. It has a 10 gig SFP plus port and a two and a half gigabit port that you can use for WAN. And in terms of LAN, there's a 10 gig SFP plus and one gigabit ethernet as well. So there's 17 additional ports in total, 16 gigabit ones and one SFP plus. Your throughput is a three and a half gigabits per second. So that's equivalent to the Pro and the Dream Machines, which we'll come on to shortly. Rack mountable, no it's not, it's wall mounted. Is dual WAN capability? Yes it does. And it has PoE as I mentioned, but it's worth noting there's three different options when it comes to PoE. So there's PoE, PoE plus, and PoE++. So we have four ports of each of those. It does have Wi-Fi 6 built into it, which again does about 300 clients, and that comes in at $999 or 958 pounds. So this was Unify's all-in-one solution. If you don't have space for a switch or you don't have space for any of those additional devices, but you really wanna get into the Unify ecosystem, this can be wall-mounted and it looks nice and it just sits all in one corner. There's multiple pictures out there of some installations which are really good. So go ahead and check those out. Do you have a redundant power supply? Yes, you can buy a redundant power supply module and it has 128 gig SSD built into it with a 512 gigabyte micro SD card. So we looked at all the ones without a cloud key controller. We looked at the ones with built-in Wi-Fi. Now I wanna look at the compact gateway. So you're not always gonna have the most amount of room. This is where this comes in. So you can get yourself something compact, which can get you into the Unify ecosystem. And then eventually when you find that space to actually get yourself a rack, you can go ahead and upgrade should you wish to do so. But actually some of these are capable of servicing an entire house and small offices. So I've put the Express back on here because it does have Wi-Fi built into it, but it's also compact as well. It's a very small and tiny device. We have the Gateway Ultra and the newly released Gateway Max. So within these, I'm gonna quickly do some comparisons within them that the Express and the Gateway Ultra only run network only. So you can't have the full Unify stack. If you wanted to run Protect or Talk or something else, you would have to have a separate device such as it being hosted or a Cloud Key or Cloud Key Enterprise or Unify hosted. They both have one gigabit WAN and LAN ports. The Express doesn't have any additional ports as we mentioned, but the Gateway Ultra has four LAN ports on the back of it. Again, none of those being PoE. Are they rack mountable? No, but you can get yourself a floating mount which you can actually connect it to your wall if you wish to do so. Is there dual WAN capabilities in the Ultra? Yes, there is. Is there PoE? No, there's no Wi-Fi built into the Gateway Ultra. So again, keep that one in mind when you are purchasing this as you would need to get yourself an additional access point that you need to power via PoE. The price of the Express and the Ultra is exactly the same. I'm not sure if this is a pricing error or something that's actually marketed at this price, but it's £123 for the Express and £95 for the Gateway Ultra. Now the Gateway Ultra is a really good price at that point, so definitely worth looking into. 
No redundant power supplies, just a USB-C power supply. There's no storage. One thing that I'm gonna highlight in this one, how many unified devices it can have and how many server clients it can run with. So to, this can run up to 30 unified devices. So this can be switches, access points, whatever additional stuff that you're adding into your network. Then we move into an upgraded version of the Gateway Ultra, which is the Gateway Max. Now this I think is a really good option for those people at home getting into the Unify ecosystem or even those small offices that need an all-in-one device to do everything for them. So this is the full stack that you can run in terms of applications. It has two and a half gig WAN and LAN capabilities, which is great. So you can have the highest speeds if you want them. It has four additional ports. So that LAN is two, four two and a half gigabit ports on the side of it. The throughput is one gigabits per second for IPS and IDS. It's not rack mountable again, but you can buy the additional floating mount. It does have dual WAN capabilities. There's no PoE again. So this is the only thing I mentioned in the previous review that I think is missing from this. If it just had even two PoE ports, this would be really good. There's no Wi-Fi built into it, but you have a bunch of different storage options. So you have a big price range that varies from the bottom. You can buy a no storage version, 512 gig version, a one terabyte version, or a two terabyte version. That can manage again up to 30 unified devices and 300 clients. The price comes in at $199 for the basic, all the way up to $479, or 190 pounds up to 460 pounds. This is the last chart that you're gonna see in terms of comparisons, and these are all the rack mountable options. So this is the Dream Machine Pro, the Dream Machine SE, the Dream Machine Pro Max, and the EFG, the Enterprise Fortress Gateway. So I'm gonna compare the three Dream Machines together because they are all along the same line and show you the upgrades between each one, and then we'll discuss the EFG. So the Dream Machines all run the full stack. They all have 10 gigabit SFP plus. Uh, from the Dream Machine SE and the Pro Max, you move to a two and a half gig option in terms of WAN. For the LAN capabilities, you have again a 10 gig and a one gig option, and that goes across the stack for all three of them. And additionally, you have nine LAN ports across all three devices. That would be eight gigabit ports, and one 10 gig SFP plus. The throughput in terms of the IPS and IDS, so the Dream Machine Pro and the SE have three and a half gigabits per second, and the Dream Machine Pro Max goes up to five gigabits per second. They're all rack mountable. They all have dual WAN capabilities. The Pro does not have PoE. The Dream Machine SE does have PoE built into it, so two PoE plus ports and six PoE ports. There's no Wi-Fi built into any of these, and the price starts from 379, 499, and 599. They can all be connected to the redundant power supply unit that Unify offers, so there's no redundant power supply built in, but you can use the RPS. For storage in the Dream Machine Pro, there's a hard drive bay. There's a hard drive bay in the Dream Machine SE, and that has 128 gig SSD built into it. And the Dream Machine Pro Max has two hard drive bays and 128 gig SSD built into it. The Dream Machine Pro and the Dream Machine SE do up to 100 devices for Unify and service up to 1,000 clients. The Dream Machine Pro Max goes ahead and doubles that and you can do 200 unified devices, so if you have a larger scale network, and it does up to 2,000 clients. Then lastly, we're gonna look at the EFG. Now we've already covered this in detail with the Gateway Enterprise, so it's exactly the same spec, so two 25 gig ports, two 10 gig ports, and two two and a half gig ports. All the specs are the same, so 12.5 gigabits per second throughput. It is rack mountable, it does have dual WAN, there's no PoE, there's no Wi-Fi, there's a hot swappable power supply unit that can be purchased if you want. There's no storage built into it, and it can manage up to 500 unified devices and service up to 5,000 clients. This comes in at $2,000 or £1,990. Now you can see with each of these scenarios, there are some pros and cons. So we start going up and up in price, depending on how big your network is gonna be and some of the capabilities that you're gonna need. So do you need PoE? Maybe we look at the Dream Machine SE. Do you need the higher throughput for IPS and IDS? Maybe you look at the Dream Machine Pro Max, or if you need the really bigger bandwidth, we look at the EFG. And same again, if you need some additional storage, do you go with the Pro Max version, or do you look at the SE, or just a standard hard drive that goes in the Dream Machine Pro. You're looking at your larger scale deployments for the Dream Machine Pro, the SE and the Pro Max. So something that's gonna be servicing a lot more clients, a bigger network, multiple switches. So that's where you would probably wanna use something like that. A lot of people do use these at home, so I'm not saying it's not there for it's not there to be used at home, but it could be a little bit overkill. These are gonna be for your small to medium offices where there are a lot more clients that are connecting into these units. 
The EFG is an enterprise product or it's labeled as an enterprise product. So it has the very big high throughput in terms of IPS and IDS and it can service up to 5,000 clients. So again, keep that one in mind depending on how big the office is and how many computers and how many devices are gonna be connecting to this across the Wi-Fi and the LAN network. Now I did tell you a small fib that that was the last chart, but I actually have one more for you. And this is the gateway price comparison. So these are all the different devices that you can buy across the Unify stack currently today. So all the way across the bottom are the ones that have that don't have the cloud key integrated and then the cloud gateway the compact versions that you can see across the middle along with the ones on the right hand side which have the wi-fi integration and at the top we have the ones that we just went through which are the fully rack mountable ones which are the dream machine pro se pro max and efg so i'm leaving that on there so you can have a little look at the comparison of prices so if you want to hit pause you can do and if you want to scroll back to see some of the differences then you can obviously go ahead and do that as well. There is a gateway in here for every single scenario that you can think of. So something from a small office, home office, which could be the light or the max non-cloud key version or the express and the ultra, depending on what you wanna host. So there's a few different options there. They're all in one units with Wi-Fi built into it. So the express, dream router and dream wall. And then we have the compact devices if you don't have a lot of room, which is the gateway max and the gateway ultra. Then we move on to the bigger ones that are gonna service more clients and have a lot more power behind them. That's the Dream Machine Pro, the SE, Pro Max, and the EFG. That's where you're gonna move on to your small, medium businesses or even larger businesses with the enterprise version. And for you enthusiasts at home that are definitely gonna be probably running the EFG, the Dream Machine Pro Max, or even the Dream Machine SE. There's one more thing I wanted to cover, and that was the cloud key and the non-cloud key versions. There are two different devices that are exactly the same across both stacks. So the EFG and the Enterprise Gateway, those two are exactly the same in terms of specification. The only difference between the two is the fact that one runs all the Unify network stack and the other one needs to be managed via a cloud key. The other one that is exactly the same, if you haven't picked this one up, is the Gateway Max and the Cloud Gateway Max. Very similar in name, there's only one word difference, but it makes a difference in terms of what they actually do. Again, one needs to be managed via Unify Cloud Key, and the other one hosts all the applications within. And the Cloud Gateway Max actually has a storage option, so you can actually add the storage in. Again, keep that one in mind when you're making those decisions. It's very hard to break something like this down as there are multiple different avenues that you can probably cover this, but I hope you found this video useful and it's given you a bit more information as to all the different gateways that are out there. All the links to the gateways are down in the description below. Again, they are linked to my Amazon affiliate, so it does help me make a little bit of a small commission to bring you these kind of videos. If there's anything specific you wanna see on these gateways, let me know down in the comments below. For now, this is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.